Here are four common signs that occur when God is about to require you to make a difficult decision. Number one, if you're faced with two good options, but you're going to lose both of those options if you don't choose one soon, this is a sign God is requiring you to make a hard decision. It's not a hard decision when you're faced with one good option and one bad option. The hardest choices occur when we're faced with two good options. Perhaps you're single, but you're in a phase of life where you are actively open to dating. Because of your openness, you've begun talking to two different guys. You're not dating either one, and neither of them have expressed interest verbally. But you know by their attention and their regular conversations with you that they both like you. You are struggling to know which one you should pursue more, though, because they are both godly men. You could see yourself with either one, but you know things are getting serious. So you need to pick one so you don't lead the other one on. Or maybe you're a Christian single man who was getting to know a Christian woman that you were connecting a lot with. But then this woman told you she needs some time away from relationships so she can just focus on God. While you really want to be with this woman because she seems like a great catch, you're also worried that you're just waiting around for something that's never going to happen, so you might just be wasting your life. Or maybe your boss has presented you with an opportunity for promotion. You could really use the money, but the position he offered you is not something you really want to do. You'd probably be happier every day in your current position, but to advance in your career, you might need to take this new role. These are difficult choices choices to make because there's clear positives to each choice. Things get especially difficult when there's an expiration date on your opportunities. I certainly can't tell you which option to choose, but I would say that wisdom would at least lead you to choose one option so you don't end up losing both. While God certainly does want you to seek his personal leading, I believe it is biblical to also rely on wisdom when we are unsure of which option God is leading us to take. Sometimes God won't tell you what to do in an audible way, but he will guide you logically when your mind is saturated with scripture. As Proverbs 2.6 states, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Number two, if you're faced with a choice that's clearly correct, but also emotionally difficult to choose, this is a sign God is requiring you to make a difficult choice. Sometimes when you write two options down on paper and you look at all the pros and cons, it becomes abundantly clear which is the correct option. But the human experience is not one that is just full of logic and rationality. Rather, we have emotions and desires that come into the equation as well, which can make it very difficult to make the right choice if it's still an emotional difficult choice. Perhaps you met someone at church right after you got done praying about your desire for a spouse. You two instantly connect and this feels like the answers to your prayer. But a few dates in, red flags start emerging. This person isn't really walking with God, they don't see the value in waiting to have sex until marriage, and they want to move way faster than you are comfortable with. But because you met this person at church and right after you prayed and you had a few good dates right off the bat, now you're emotionally invested and you're finding it difficult to make the right choice that God is showing you. In these moments, when we submit to the Lord, he will give us the strength to make the right decision even though it's not the easiest decision. In fact, sometimes in life, the easiest choices are often the worst choices to make. It's very simple to make bad choices. The hard choices are often the good choices. Just remember, the longer you wait to make that choice you know is the right decision that God is leading you to make, the harder it's going to be to finally make it because you know you are eventually going to make that right choice. But again, it's just getting harder with the delay. As James 4 verse 17 says, so he who knows the right thing to do yet fails to do it, for him it is sin. Number three, if you know you need to start pursuing something that's going to take a long time to receive, this is a sign God is requiring you to make a hard decision. Sometimes a mountain looks so big, we get frozen in fear before we even take one step forward. Mountains are not climbed through huge bounding leaps. Mountains are climbed through persistently 
putting one foot in front of the other over and over again until you finally reach the top. This is often what's required to receive those big blessings and good things that we want in life. Anything worth having almost always requires a massive amount of effort to receive. Nothing of great value comes without paying a great cost, a great price. Yes, certainly from a Christian perspective, everything good is by grace. So I'm not saying that we have to earn good things and earn blessings from God. Ultimately, Jesus Christ paid the necessary price for us to be blessed by the Lord. But this truth does not contradict the principle that whoever gathers little by little is the one who gathers the most in the end. As Proverbs 13, 11 explains, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Do you want a better career? Well, perhaps you're going to have to go back to school and get a four-year degree. Do you want to become an expert in a specific trade? That may mean you need to enter into an apprenticeship that's going to take years as you study under an expert in that trade. Do you want to be in a Christian marriage one day? Perhaps it's going to take some months or years to rid yourself of the godlessness that you've gotten involved in so that you can have a holy relationship. Do you want to make more friends? Perhaps you're going to have to invest that time and emotional energy that you know is required, but that you know you also have been withholding because that's just a lot of work. Don't let the length of the journey scare you from taking the first step. Every long journey always begins with that first step. And number four, if you know you have to give up the life you've built for yourself so that you can receive the life God wants to give you, this is a sign God is requiring you to make a hard decision. If you're struggling to let go of the life you've built for yourself, that truly is a difficult decision. But when we weigh what we're giving up against what we're gaining in Christ, the decision becomes so much clearer, as Philippians 3, 7 through 9 explains. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the right righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Please give this video a thumbs up if you want to help me reach more people with this Christian content. And here's my most recent video if you haven't seen that one. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Until next time, God bless.